Good day and welcome to our math class. Today's topic is about quadrilateral and we're going to focus on parallelogram and special parallelograms. So this is third quarter math 9 and let's have first the definition of quadrilateral. When we say quadrilateral, so the definition of it, it is a closed figure bounded by four line segments or sides. Ang keyword po natin dito sa parallelogram is yung four line segments or sides. So kapag yung given na shape, katulad na itong nasa um, slide natin, Kapag yung given a shape a closed figure, so ito ay closed figure, at bounded, bounded siya by four line segments or sides. So we have here one side, two, three, and four. So therefore, we can consider it as a quadrilateral. Another feature ng quadrilateral it has a sum of 360 degrees. So, yung interior angles lang ang tinutukoy natin dito. So, when we say interior angles, ito yung mga vertex angles. So, like angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. So, based dun sa um, feature na quadrilateral, so, pag pinag-add natin yung measurement ng angle A plus angle B plus angle C and angle D, it should be 360 degrees. So, we have here angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is equal to 360 degrees. So, let's have an example. So, for example, yung measurement ng angle A ay 150 and yung angle B ay 80 degrees, and angle C is 60, and therefore, ang measurement ng angle D natin ay 70 degrees. So, paano nakuha yung 70 degrees? So, we're going to add the measurement of angle A, B, and C, so 150 plus 80 plus 60. So, that will be 290. Ngayon, ang hinahanap natin ay angle D. Eh, ang kailangan nga, ba ang sum nga daw ng quadrilateral or measurement ng angles ay 360. Kung meron na tayong 290, so we still need 70 para maging 360 degrees. So, paano na compute yun? So, add to 150 plus 80 plus 60. 290 and then subtract lang from 360. So 360 minus 290, so that is 70 degrees. We have here two groups, quadrilateral and then not quadrilateral. Going back to the definition of quadrilateral, it is a closed figure bounded by four line segments or sides. So ito yung quadrilateral. So, all of this here, ito mga figure na to, it is a closed figure and then bounded by um, four line segments. Now, let's take a look at the other group, the not quadrilateral part. Kasi may mga time na mukha siyang quadrilateral but it is not really a quadrilateral or we cannot really consider it as a quadrilateral. Katulad na itong unang <clears throat> um, example na to. Um, it looks like a rectangle. And of course, ang rectangle ay isang quadrilateral. But, bakit siya nag-fall under the, the group of not quadrilateral? Well, meron siyang, it looks like merong four sides. Pero we cannot consider this as quadrilateral because of the curve parts. So, ito may mga curve na to. So, kapag yung given figure ay may curve, so we cannot really consider it as a quadrilateral. So, that's why ito ay hindi quadrilateral. So, another one here. So, ito mukha siyang border ng QR code. And, 
um, mukha siyang square. Pero bakit siya hindi quadrilateral? Well, meron siyang four sides and may corner siya, pointed. So, pointed yung mga corners niya, hindi naman siya curve. Pero ang concern natin dito is meron naman siyang opening. Based sa definition ng quadrilateral, dapat closed figure. So, dahil may opening siya ito, so may mga opening, so it is not a quadrilateral. And the last given, obviously, meron siyang four sides, pero sobrang open niya, hindi siya closed figure, so we cannot consider it as a quadrilateral. So let's proceed to the next one. We have here concave quadrilateral and convex quadrilateral. So ano yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa? When we say concave, yung figure niya, so kung mapapansin nyo yung dalawa, meron siyang similarity. So, meron silang hallowed na part. Ito yung hallowed part. Ibig sabihin, merong lubog na part dun sa figure. So, unlike sa convex quadrilateral, so wala silang lubog na part. Um, the other um, way to test the given quadrilateral, if it is a concave or convex, is to draw a line. So, katulad na ito, when we draw a line sa concave, so may part na dumaan yung line sa loob, and then, dumaan sa labas. And then, dadaan ulit sa loob. So, kapag ganun, concave po yun. Unlike sa convex. So, let's try to draw a line. So, once lang siya dadaan sa loob. So, once lang dadaan sa loob. And then, tatagos na agad dun sa labas. So, that is convex. And just be familiar with the figure. Basta may lubog siyang part. So, that is concave. Quadrilateral. Kapag wala naman lubog na part. So, that is convex. So, the next part of our lesson is the family of quadrilateral. And there, we're going to um, explain the different kinds of quadrilateral. This is quadrilateral family tree. And this picture came from Matt Monks. Talking about the quadrilateral, or just like the normal family tree, um, meron tayong pinakaninuno. Ngayon, itong quadrilateral has three categories. So, we have here the trapezoid, the parallelogram, and the kite. Of course, itong tatlong to ay under ng quadrilateral. Therefore, itong tatlo, trapezoid, parallelogram, and kite, are also four-sided. But, they have differences. Ano yung pinagkaiba-iba ng trapezoid, parallelogram, and kite? So, they differ... Um, in terms of the number of parallel lines or pairs of parallel lines. Here in trapezoid, babaguhin lang natin ito ng bahagya. Instead of two parallel sides, so gagawin lang natin siyang one pair of parallel sides. Again, in trapezoid, ang definition po niyan ay it has a one pair of parallel sides. So, ano yung parallel side dyan? Ito pong may arrow. Kung mapapansin nyo, ito pong may arrow. Itong upper part at itong lower part. So, these two lines are parallel. So, again, trapezoid, one pair of parallel lines. In parallelogram naman, so, it has two pairs of parallel lines or parallel sides. So, the first pair is this upper part and lower part. So, ito pong dalawang line. Itong line na to at ito ay parallel. The other pair is yung nasa left and right na side. So, itong part na to at itong side na to ay parallel. Again, parallelogram, two pairs of parallel lines. And in kite naman, it has no pairs of parallel lines. So, yun po yung pinagkaiba ng trapezoid, parallelogram, and kite. Again, trapezoid, one pair of parallel lines. Parallelogram, two pairs of parallel lines. Kite, no pair of parallel lines. But for today, we're just going to deal with parallelogram and yung mga nasa ilalim ng parallelogram. Talking about the rectangle and rhombus and square, so we call them special parallelograms. Ngayon, ang um, rectangle, rhombus, at square so, nagtataglay din sila ng dalawang pairs of parallel lines, katulad ng parallelogram. Well, itong tatlong to ay parallelogram pa rin naman. So, they are just special 
parallelograms. Bakit sila naging special parallelogram? Ngayon, so let's have a um, simple analogy. So just like for example sa halo-halo. So we have a regular halo-halo and special halo-halo. Of course, ang regular halo-halo at special halo-halo, halos pareho lang yan ng um, sahog. Katulad ng paralelogram at saka nitong special paralelogram, pareho silang merong two pairs of parallel lines. Ngayon, ano ang meron sa special halo-halo? So, di ba pag special halo-halo, kadalasan meron siyang ube na ice cream, for example, which is wala dun sa regular um, halo-halo. So, just like in special parallelogram, itong rectangular rhombus at saka square, so they have additional feature or trait na walang sa paralelogram or hindi makikita sa regular paralelogram. So that's why they are called special paralelograms. So later on, um, we're going to deal with the properties ng paralelogram, rectangular rhombus at saka square. So yun po yung main part ng ating lesson for today. So we will move now to the properties of paralelogram.